Welcome back YouTubers to my channel of an everyday life of an ASB. For those of you who are new, I welcome you all. My name is ASB Answers. I create videos about mental health and autism along with tips and advice along with many other fun and games and videos that will come your way. I advocate and educate about mental health and autism. So if you're into any of this and more, feel free to smash that subscribe button on the bottom right hand corner of the screen and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any future updates or posts or even follow me on my socials that are listed below. As you can see that I'm now returning back to the intervention and therapies for autistic children as we have covered a few yet would like to do some more. The ones that we have covered so far are as follows. They are introduction to intervention and therapies of the types of interventions and therapies that are available for autistic children. Two parts of behaviour analysis therapy or applied behaviour analysis therapy. Part one was introduction to it and why it is bad for autistic children and part two was the controversy around or about the applied behaviour analysis therapy. All about developmental pragmatic social model and all about discrete child training. So basically before I can this next topic of this, I would like to put a disclaimer as always for most of my videos. I'm no medical doctor, I'm your normal Joe Blogs, so if you see anything out of the ordinary, please do seek professional help for yourself or your loved one, or seek second opinion for yourself or your loved one, because I don't condone self-harm. Okay, as I said for, before, many people may tend to question over and over again about the different types of treatments and therapies that are available for autistic children and adults, even though some of these will actually come into effect for adults as well if you just progress it through, you know, when you transit from young child to teenage to adult stage, some of these will be useful for us as adults. Um, I'm hoping to discuss this with you all to gain a clearer understanding so to speak. So in saying this, basically that there may be, before I begin, we should open up for a few comments for discussion or questions, shall we say. So number one, if you've done any of these treatments that I've clearly shared earlier or as of now, my question to you is if, basically, what are your experiences like for these? Was it good or bad? What did you learn from it? What did you not learn from it? What can you make yourself better at for these interventions that has been introduced? So the very first question that lays on our head, like always with everything, is what is incidental teaching? Incidental teaching is a teaching technique that is used in some autism spectrum disorder therapies to build children's communication and other skills. Research has shown that incidental teaching does work. Incidental teaching isn't a therapy in itself, but a naturalistic teaching technique that is used in some other form of therapies, particularly applied behavior analysis programs that has been introduced. When teachers or parents are using incidental teaching, they are using natural occurring opportunities for learning, like playtime, to develop children's skills. And they reinforce children's attempts to behave in a desired way the closer the children get to the desired behaviors. The type of therapy this is, it's behavioral, it's listed as. Who is incidental teaching for? Incidental teaching is typically used with children aged between the years of two to nine years old, but it's suitable for people of any age who have autism spectrum disorder or any developmental delays. What is incidental teaching used for? As I said before, it's used to improve language and any other communication skills in children with autism spectrum disorder. This also aims to help children transfer their skills from one situation to another and to encourage them to start conversation. Where does incidental teaching come from? Obviously, as I said before, incidental teaching is basically or has been part of the applied behavior analysis approach since the 1970s. It was the first naturalistic teaching technique that was developed. It offered an alternative to traditional techniques that taught skills in very controlled environments. The idea behind incidental teaching is based on if a skill is rewarded, a child will use it more often. All naturalistic teaching techniques assume that a child will use skills more easily in a wide range of situations if those skills are learned in a natural environment, such as playtime instead of in a highly structured setting like a clinic. Incidental Teaching relies on the children's natural interest as the basis 
for learning with the teacher following the ch child's lead. The incidental teaching will involve basically using several s steps to improve communication skills such as the following. One, set up an interesting environment for a child. A classic example here for this step is a play area with favourite objects and or activities for a child to engage in. Two, restrict access to an interesting object in some way, for example, by putting it in a place that's visible but out of reach. Three, wait for the child to ask for the object or make a gesture like pointing. This is where the learning begins. Don't forever be hard on yourself, basically. Just remember that if they're pointing at the particular objects, just to note that that's still their form of communication, especially for non-verbal autistics. Basically, as we know, some of them may either point grunt, groan, or even try to communicate with sign language or some other form of technique that I have actually clearly shared based on one on how to help an autistic child, which I'll link in the archive above me and put it in the description below me so you can read more about how to help your child that is non-verbal. Prompt the child to elaborate. For example, what colours teddy bear do you want? Wait until the child responds. The classic example that the child may answer, I would like pink teddy. And last but not least in this step is reward the child by giving the desired object that they have asked. Incidental teaching can take a lot of time. It might need several hours of the day. Depending on the needs of the child, it can go on for several years like many other techniques or treatments and therapies interventions that has been introduced along with also patience and guidance along the way. The cost considerations of this, of the naturalistic teaching approaches will depend on the type of intervention of the program that has been used. Applied behaviour analysis programs that use incidental teaching will probably involve a high cost because they take a lot of time, however. If you choose to work with a speech pathologist or psychologist, your cost might be covered for up to 20 sessions by Medicare or any other departments that you work for for your child to actually get the help that some private healthcare funds might also cover a portion of the consultation fee, but again, do seek your doctor and psychologist and everybody else that's involved with your child learning and developmental stages and stuff so that you can gain more information on this. This can be claimed immediately if the provider has HIC APN. Basically, just a reminder also before a continuing, some of this is based on Australian research and American research that I've done of these therapies and interventions for children. I have been trying to look into some in New Zealand but clearly there hasn't been that much at the moment because as I said before that we have limited resources here in New Zealand and hopefully we can still find the answers that we're looking for regardless. Does incidental teaching which you may be asking Basically, there has been high quality research that has shown that this approach has positive effects on the behaviour of children with autism spectrum disorder. Who practices incidental teaching? Anyone can practice this kind of technique. Most applied behaviour analysis programs are developed by psychologists and are implemented by special education teachers, occupational therapists, speech pathologists and any other aids that helps with your children development and learning. Parent educational training support and enrollment. If your child is in applied behaviour analysis programs that uses the naturalistic teaching techniques, however, you'll have an active role in doing so. The level of parent involvement will vary depending on the program or service in which incidental teaching is being used. You might get some training depending on the specific programs. You can also use incidental teaching practices during everyday activities, for example, when you're reading a story or going to the park. Obviously, where you can find a practitioner that is actually, you know, qualified for this is like the Behaviour Analyst Certification Board has a list of members internationally who has achieved certification in ABA. You can also find practitioners by going to, like, again, basically the Speech Pathology of Australia, Occupational Therapy Australia. If you're interested in incidental teaching, it's a good idea to talk about it with your GP and yeah. other people that are trained in this area that are working with your child. You could also talk with your NDIA planner, NDIA childhood partner and NDIS local area coordination partner if you've had one. There are many treatments for autism spectrum disorders, as I said, they may range from those based on behaviour and developmental and the like to those based on medicine or alternative therapies. Basically, my video 
guide hopefully will be on the types of interventions for children with ASD basically taking you through the main treatments so you can better understand your child's options that is needed. Well this quickly ends of uh, the ex incident teaching for autism children video. As I said before, before I end this again, I want to throw some of the questions out there basically. One is with this, if any of you out there has done or heard of this, have you done this kind of intervention therapy if you have done so? What it was it like for you? The good the, and the bad basically and maybe what you learnt from it, what can you do to learn yourself more to actually be yourself if it didn't work for you and how did you overcome some of the certain things if you didn't achieve the desired result or outcome for any of these therapies and what interventions. So without further ado guys, this was Paul Thurf for watching, do what you love, love what you do. Until next time, it's be starting out and I'll see you again soon, ciao for now.